Dr. James Giordano, 2018 O'Malley Visiting Chair in Bioethics here at Loyola Marymount University and Professor in the Departments of Neurology and Biochemistry, Chief of the Neuroethics Studies Unit at Georgetown University Medical Center. You know, in many ways, a lot of what we're doing today in brain science is not only cutting edge within the sciences, but cutting edge for the knowledge base of humanity. We're going ever more boldly and ever more bravely into the brain as a final frontier of understanding, of engagement, and in some cases, of effect and manipulation. Once we let the proverbial cat out of the bag, well, at that point, now we let loose science and technology in the broader public sphere. And this then gets us into the actual derivative social issues. We've advised the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Pentagon, which sounds very important. <laughs> the individuals, the groups, the politics, and the societies that have the most sophisticated tools and perhaps weapons win. Out of disclosure, some of the work that I'm doing here today is funded by the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories. I'm also funded by the European Union Human Brain Project, specifically the Subproject 12, where I'm a task leader for dual-use brain science. And I've also done some ongoing work with the Strategic Multi-Level Assessment Crew over the past 10 years at the Pentagon, at Dr. Tabayan's group, and with DARPA. The military agenda is interested in the potential weaponization and misuse of the brain sciences for nefarious agenda for political intelligence and military uses. My particular set of interests have been in the development of advancing areas of neuroscience and neurotechnology with particular deep dive with regard to neurotech. Increasingly, the boundary between neuroscience and engineering has become seamless. That said, what this has now done is put the brain literally at our fingertips. At our fingertips of investigation, parting the proverbial curtains of the vagaries of what the structures and functions of the brain may do, but also parting those curtains of capability to allow us to literally go in up to the elbows to be able to assess, affect, manipulate, and control the brain. What has gone from the drawing board to the reality is this, the use of neural interfacing and physiological interfacing through the idea of remote controlled small scale systems to create a nano swarm of biopenetrable materials that you cannot see that can penetrate all but the most robust biochemical filters that are able to integrate themselves through a variety of membranes, mucous membranes, and wherever, mouth, nose, ears, eyes, and they can be done in such a level that their presence is almost impossible to detect, and as such, the attribution becomes exceedingly difficult to demonstrate. The idea here is to put minimal-sized electrodes in a network within a brain through only minimal intervention to be able to read and write into the brain function in real time, remotely. And by affecting the way that brain is built and the way it functions, influence in ways that are kinetic and non-kinetic, the attitudes, beliefs, thoughts, emotions, activities, and relative vulnerabilities and predispositions of those individuals for whom may threaten us. It used to be that I need to be exceedingly close to someone to now influence them with a weapon, and now what we see is we create both distal potential as well as much more capable potential to affect them in a variety of different ways. And although it may not be that the sky is falling yet, folks, it looks like rain. Bring an umbrella. That said, what's going to rain down? Take a look. This is the front of my pen. This amount of nanomaterial, if be able to maintain and sustain with regard to its deliverability and aerosolization, could in fact affect all of you. Or, based upon where I come from, New York City, all you. Look at this. Look at this. I'm carrying that material. Did you see it? Would I have to lug a giant weapon into the room? No, I wouldn't. And what if, in fact, I utilize some form of an unmanned aerial device or unmanned ground device as a delivery vehicle? Something like a drone or a bug. Could I do something with that? But let's keep going. Could I also utilize a whole host of devices to be able to affect individuals close in, for example, during interrogations, during social engagements, during human terrain team engagements, or more remotely, in a room, in a theater, in an airplane, in a bus, in a store, in a mall? The answer is increasingly yes. The brain sciences are currently being investigated and in some cases are being used in such endeavors, not only domestically, but worldwide. Not a month goes by where I don't get a call at my institute by someone telling me that someone in the government implanted one of these things in their brain without them knowing. I'm not kidding. See, nano cells are real small. A thousand times smaller than these dust particulates. You inhale it, they go to work replicating, spreading like a virus, multiplying in exponentials. 
six months' time, I could have a hundred million people. Converted, ditch diggers, porn stars, and presidents. Not one would be the wiser. A hundred million people will buy what I want them to buy and do pretty much damn well anything I figure they ought to do. There are those that think, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. The last sanctified space is that of my consciousness, and you're using this stuff to invade that? You're right. You don't get rich by sitting behind a desk, so I didn't want to do that. And I'm in the White House and I was lonely. Love this guy right here. Let me give this guy a hug. I love this guy right here. Yeah, amen. Yes. That's really nice. There was something about when I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. You made a Superman. That was that's my favorite superhero. And you made a Superman cake. I was connected with a neuropsychologist that works with the athletes in the NBA and the NFL. And he, he looked at my brain. If you go on three parts, I'm going to go ahead and drop some bombs for you. 98 percentile IQ test. He's doing well, except, of course, for the Never Trumpers. But they are on mouth to mouth resuscitation. I wouldn't be able to remember his name from a misdiagnosis. And what we need is we can empower the pharmaceutical and, and make more money. That's one thing. I've never stepped into a situation where I didn't make people more money. So we can empower pharmaceuticals, we can empower our industries, we can empower our factories, we can bring not only Adidas on shore, we can bring Foxconn. The Attorney General says, I'm going to recuse myself. And I said, why the hell didn't he tell me that before I put him in? Russia, 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 Russia. Then we're cheating on our country. And we're putting people in positions to have to do illegal things. And I said, why the hell didn't he tell me that before I put him in? Russia, Russia. Darling, is the wind blowing today? I'd like to watch television, darling. This is our president. Russia, please, if you can, get us Hillary Clinton's emails. Please, Russia, please. If he don't look good, we don't look good. He asked Russia to go get This is our president! Yes, I agree with this. This speech should have been delivered one year from now, not now, damn it! If he don't look good, we don't look good. See, I don't have white hair. Then we're cheating on our country. We haven't figured that one out yet. To have to do illegal things, to end up in the cheapest factory ever. Why? How do you get to Europe? We haven't figured that one out yet. We don't use airplanes. I brought a gift with me right here. Um. This right here is the iPlane 1. It's a hydrogen powered uh, airplane. And this is what our president should be flying in. I said, let's go to Iraq. Okay, General Raisin Cane, how fast can, sir, we can have it totally finished in one week. We'll get rid of Air Force One. Can we get rid of Air Force One? <laughs> I said, one week, and yet I see senators that are there for 20 years, white hair. For me, also as a guy that looks up to you, looks up to Rafferty, looks up to American industry guys, non-political, no bull put the beep on it, however you want to do it, five seconds delay, and just goes in and gets it done. Today I'm proud to announce that I will be very soon signing an executive order requiring colleges and universities to support free speech. I love this guy right here. They're trying to take you out with bullshit. It made me feel like Superman. You made a Superman. That was that's my favorite superhero. And you made a Superman king. Who does this? Other countries say, get the hell out of here. They will execute the baby after birth. Donald Trump should not, under any circumstances. Love this guy right here. Let me give this guy a hug right here. I love this guy right here. Yeah, amen. Yes. That's really nice. Good question.